Hello everyone, my name is Kelvin Ampem Darko and I am a first year anesthesiology and critical care medicine resident in Baltimore, Maryland. And today I want to talk about why I chose anesthesiology. The first thing is I started with me, who I was and my interests. And I think that already at baseline, I'm a very high energy, high activity individual. And so I knew that sitting down and being cerebral wasn't really my thing. So I already knew just from talking to people that I had to do something procedural. So I got advice from a ton of upperclassmen or, you know, other medical students ahead of me. And they told me to start shadowing surgery. And this is the very first point I want to make across that. Thinking that you may do something procedural does not mean surgery. So in short, surgery does not equal procedural and procedural does not equal surgery. Surgery happens to be very procedural, but you can go into a procedural specialty that is not surgery. I say this because I have quite a few examples just off the top of my head about procedural specialties that are not surgical. Interventional radiology, for example, interventional pain, PMNR, GI. All of these specialties I can think about are very, very procedural at times and yet are not necessarily surgical. And so having gotten this advice, I wrongly only started shadowing surgical specialties. Of course, I absolutely loved my experience and I had a good time, but usually I felt like I came back home with not much bandwidth to do much else. And so I started to wonder if there was an alternative to this. So I felt quite lost and I didn't quite know what to do. And serendipity is a beautiful thing. I ran into a very close friend of mine who is now an anesthesiology resident in New York City who sat me down. We had a three hour conversation essentially. We ran into each other in the elevator and we just got to talking about why he loves anesthesiology so much. And this is kind of the second point I wanna get into about how to make big life decisions. I was doing some reading and I learned that this is something quite effective and I implemented it in my own life. It's called a decision-making matrix. You can Google it and kind of go through how it is. It's quite simple actually. The idea behind it is that you reflect, think about your experiences, think about things you've liked and not liked and create categories for things that are important to you on a simple Excel spreadsheet. You look up how to essentially weight each characteristic that you care about and then assign a value to it. I know it sounds a bit complicated, but the whole idea, I'll give you an example, is if I wanna buy a new home, location and weather matters to me the most. So on the scale of one to three, three being what I care the most about, I'd give each of those a three. If it was about size and I didn't care much about that, I'd give that a one. And so for each, category, each house that I care about, I would give a score to how it rates on each of the things I care about. So for me, the things I considered when I was considering anesthesiology as a specialty, the categories that matter to me the most are things I'm going to outline here in this video. First off, I wanted to feel like a doctor in the traditional sense of the word. So to me, the number one thing that was important to me was having a good breadth of knowledge knowing human anatomy, pathophysiology, and understanding how manipulation of these mechanistic aspects of human biology could impact the way life as it exists can turn. And so that is something that I realized always fascinated me. I also loved my anatomy class a lot. I love my professor. And I realized that it is something that I wanted to feature heavily in my day-to-day -day practice. So that is the first thing that I knew that I cared about. And that is something anesthesiology has in abundance. The second thing for me is the specialty had to be very procedural in nature. I knew that there are a lot of specialties where it's very cerebral. You consider a lot of data and try to make conclusions based on that. And anesthesiology is the same way. It just happens to be more real time. And it also means that typically you have to intervene in real time about how to help this patient currently in the OR or in the ICU. So that is something I also realized I cared a lot about. And so I wanted to have that be a part of the specialty I chose. Third thing for me was the specialty had to have relatively minimal note taking. It isn't necessarily the case in the ICU, but in the general OR, note taking isn't a very big part of anesthesiology. And that is something I really cared about simply because I know me and computer work, we don't mesh too well. And that is something that I love about anesthesiology is that you had a lot of procedural experience and not so much sitting in front of computer and taking notes. And so that is one thing that I consider very seriously and deeply when I was choosing anesthesiology as my specialty. One thing that I also believe isn't talked about enough when it comes to choosing a residency spot for me that I cared about was the reasonable time of training. Everyone is different and everyone has different values. But for me, it mattered that I wasn't going to spend more than half a decade in training. So the upper limit of what I was willing to do for residency was probably around five years. I know this about myself. I only took one gap year, 
but I also know that I'm ready and eager to be a full-time practicing clinician. As such, residency programs that were over five years, I immediately ruled them out. Not because they weren't interesting or not because they weren't amazing fields, it's just that for me personally, it mattered to me that the time of training was reasonable. The second thing is not necessarily uh, different, but it's also fellowship training. In anesthesiology, you do four years of your primary residency, and after that, you can go out and be a general practitioner, or you can choose to do a fellowship. There are multiple options like pediatric anesthesiology, obstetric anesthesiology, cardiothoracic or cardiac anesthesiology. You can also have non-ACGME options like liver and ENT, and all of these across the board take about one year. I'm gonna link a video down below made by Max Feinstein out, out of New York City, who outlines all the different specialties in anesthesiology that I absolutely love. I think that this is something that I also cared a lot about because it meant that I didn't have to wait too long to start to be actively engaged in patient care independently. And the last thing I wanted to kind of confess about the fact that uh, anesthesiology really drew me was when things went sideways who kind of stepped up. I remember this moment in the OR where things got really tense and emergent and the patient wasn't doing too good. After the anesthesiology informed the surgeon of that, everyone stepped back, other anesthesiologists came through and helped stabilize and save this patient's life. And for me, that was a remarkable thing to witness. It's that when things went sideways, that guy was an anesthesiologist who had to save this person's life. And I think that that's something I didn't expect to see. It's the same thing with codes. When the code is called in the hospital, anesthesiologists kind of sneak in like ninjas, get a tube and connect the patient, stabilize the patient, and then bounce. And I thought that that was such a remarkable thing to be able to be that person that everyone looks to when things are really critical. You don't have to be the center of attention at all times, and that is also a potential downside, of course, of anesthesiology. But for me, it mattered to me that I had the skill set that would make it possible for me to be the person to step up. And I also made a joke that if I were in a tense situation and say in an airport, for example, somebody called for help, is there a doctor here? I would love to have some sense of how to approach critical code situations. And so that for me is something that I had to admit to myself that I wanted in the specialty I chose. And I didn't want to be necessarily a bystander when things were at their most critical. And that for me is the biggest thing that I love about my field and anesthesiology and that's something that really drew me to it. And I think the icing on the cake is something that my home program director would say. He said that anesthesiologists take their work very seriously, but they don't take themselves too seriously. And that to me encompasses precisely why I love this particular group of people that were very driven, very hardworking, but incredibly humble and relatable. People you'd want to get a cup of coffee with and talk about life with. And it was remarkable to find that combination of such high technical skill and knowledge and breadth of knowledge in anatomy and physiology that I realized that it is the perfect combination of the kind of person I aspire to become and the kind of clinician I aspire to become. And so for me, that was essentially the icing on the cake about why I chose anesthesiology as a specialty. There are a lot of amazing specialties out there and each of them have their own strengths and weaknesses. Hopefully sometime down the line, I will make a video about the cons of anesthesiology once I start my CA one year in a couple of months. And so if you would like to know, please comment down below and I'll do so. At the end of the day, I'm not gonna ask you to like or subscribe, but if you can think of one person that could be helped by this video, I'd like you to send it to them. And then I'll know that at least my job here is done. Thank you.